Welcome to this educational program. This module discusses hormone therapy for prostate cancer. There are other modules available that provide an overview of prostate cancer and discuss other treatments in greater detail. It is hoped that you will have viewed the module entitled Understanding Prostate Cancer prior to this one. This information is taken from a recent review of the medical literature and attempts to be as comprehensive as possible. However, it may not necessarily reflect the experience of your healthcare provider or the specifics of your situation. This program is strictly informational in nature and no attempt is made to provide opinion or recommendation. Please feel free to view this presentation as many times as necessary. You may also use the player on your left to repeat slides or to skip through them in any order you wish. Prostate cancer is the uncontrolled growth of gland cells in the prostate, a small gland just below the bladder that surrounds the urethra or urine channel. This common cancer is detected most commonly by the prostate-specific antigen or PSA blood test and digital rectal exam or DRE. The diagnosis is confirmed by a biopsy which allows doctors to look at the prostate cells under a microscope. The treatment for prostate cancer depends on the stage or extent of the disease, and different options may be considered for different stages of cancer. In general terms, prostate cancer may be considered localized or organ-confined when it is felt to be entirely contained within the borders of the prostate, locally advanced when there is suspicion or evidence that it has escaped through the capsule of the prostate or into nearby structures, recurrent when it has previously been treated and then come back either locally or distantly, and metastatic when it has spread to other parts of the body away from the prostate. There are usually a number of treatment options available for managing prostate cancer. The treatments recommended by a doctor will depend mainly on the stage and grade of a patient's cancer and the patient's general health and age. For early stage prostate cancer, the aim of treatment is cure. For later stage cancer, the aim of treatment is to extend life and help relieve symptoms. The standard treatments for prostate cancer include surgical removal of the entire prostate, radiation therapy using high-energy rays to kill cancer cells and shrink tumors, and active surveillance with possible delayed intervention, meaning that one is closely watched by a physician with regular exams and testing to check for cancer growth. Hormone therapy is not a curative treatment for prostate cancer, but it is a method of slowing cancer growth for a period of time. It can be used for both localized and advanced prostate cancer. In the setting of localized prostate cancer, it is sometimes used alone for older men or those not suitable for other treatments. More commonly in this setting, it is given to optimize the results of other treatment like surgery or radiation, either before treatment, called neoadjuvant hormone therapy, or after treatment, called adjuvant hormone therapy, or both. In very advanced or metastatic cancer, where the cancer has spread to other parts of the body, it is often used alone to keep the cancer under control for as long as possible. Hormone therapy is a treatment that aims to decrease the production of or block the action of the male hormone testosterone. Hormone therapy originated from research in the 1940s that confirmed testosterone withdrawal from the body actually led to the destruction of prostate cancer cells and shrinking of prostate tumors. This groundbreaking work resulted in the only Nobel Prize ever awarded to a urologist. Testosterone is the male sex hormone responsible for the development of muscle mass, strength, production and maturation of sperm, male physical characteristics, and sex drive. The majority of testosterone is produced by the testicles, and small amounts are synthesized by the adrenal glands, the organs that sit just above the kidneys. When the brain detects low levels of testosterone in the blood, the hypothalamus gland deep in the brain releases a substance called luteinizing hormone releasing hormone, or LHRH. LHRH travels to the nearby pituitary gland where it stimulates the release of another hormone called luteinizing hormone, or LH. LH travels through the bloodstream and stimulates the production of testosterone in the testicles and adrenal glands. Testosterone is then released into the bloodstream and acts in the prostate to stimulate the growth of prostate cells. This forms a so-called feedback loop that controls the production of testosterone. 
When the body senses testosterone is low and in need, it stimulates production. When there is an abundance of testosterone present, then the body can use this loop to decrease production. It is this loop that is manipulated when we treat prostate cancer by hormone therapy. Testosterone not only stimulates the growth of normal prostate, it also stimulates the growth of prostate cancer cells. By depleting testosterone, hormone therapy aims to reduce prostate cancer symptoms and slow cancer growth. Hormone therapy can be accomplished through either surgery or medications. Orchiectomy is the surgical removal of testicles. LHRH analog therapy is medication that blocks signals from the brain that instructs the testicles to produce testosterone, the so-called feedback loop previously mentioned. And antiandrogen therapy is medication that blocks the action of testosterone released by the adrenal glands and testicles and acts to block testosterone stimulation of prostate cancer growth directly. Orchiectomy, or surgical castration, is the surgical removal of the testicles, which produce 95% of the body's testosterone. It is a minor operation that can usually be performed as an outpatient procedure, meaning it requires no overnight hospital stay. The patient is given a local anesthetic or freezing medication to numb just the area to be operated on, or a spinal anesthetic, medication to numb the body from the waist down, or he may be put to sleep with a general anesthetic. The surgeon makes a small incision or cut into the scrotum and removes both testicles. The incision is sealed and most patients are allowed to return home the same day of the procedure. Orchiectomy is a simple procedure and has very few complications and minimal postoperative pain. Usually, no further hormone therapy is needed afterwards, making orchiectomy a very attractive choice for someone who prefers a one-time procedure. Occasionally, your doctor may add an antiandrogen treatment to take orally despite having had the orchiectomy. This is called total or complete androgen blockade and is discussed later. Your doctor will decide if this approach to hormone treatment is appropriate for you. Since orchiectomy is a permanent treatment and its effects cannot be reversed, and because of the psychological impact it can have, some men prefer a non-surgical hormone therapy option. LHRH analogs are drugs that remove the signals from the brain that tell the testicles to produce testosterone. Research shows that these drugs may lower the level of testosterone just as effectively as surgical removal of the testicles. They offer an effective alternative for those men who cannot or choose not to have an orchiectomy. Drugs in this class, including the trade names Lupron, Superfact, Eligard, and Zolidex, are long-acting injections that are given every 1 to 12 months, depending on the preparation. Treatment with LHRH analogs is an effective alternative to orchiectomy. Unlike surgery, it is minimally invasive and its effects may be reversible. Common side effects of hormone therapy include hot flashes, enlarged breasts, reduced libido or sex drive, decreased ability to have erections, fatigue, and decreased muscle strength. It is important to understand that one's outward appearance will not noticeably change while taking hormones other than perhaps some mild breast enlargement that is usually only noticeable to a partner. Furthermore, one's voice will not change on hormone therapy. Some men also experience some weight gain, anemia or low red blood count, and altered levels of fat and cholesterol in the blood. Depression, as well as slowed thinking, memory changes, or confusion can also rarely occur. A final important point to make regarding the effects of hormone therapy is that it can cause bone thinning in some men, and patients therefore require monitoring of bone health during treatment. When this does occur, it may require additional treatment to strengthen the bones. LHRH analogs cause an initial spike of testosterone levels called a hormone flare for a period of 7 to 10 days following the start of treatment. This happens because it initially acts to stimulate testosterone production via the feedback loop mentioned earlier and then inhibits the production of testosterone after the flare phenomenon occurs. In a small percentage of patients with advanced metastatic prostate cancer, this testosterone surge may cause a brief worsening of cancer symptoms, including bone pain, spinal cord compression, and urinary retention. Giving antiandrogens, the third type of hormone treatment, 
shortly before starting LHRH analog therapy, can prevent this hormone flare. This works because these medications block the prostate cancer stimulation by testosterone directly, unlike the LHRH agonist medications, which act indirectly by dampening the feedback loop. Most doctors will prescribe antiandrogens simultaneously for the first number of weeks while giving LHRH agonist injections to prevent this hormone flare. Antiandrogens are drugs that do not prevent testosterone production but block the action of testosterone on the prostate. By blocking hormone receptors in the prostate, they prevent testosterone from nourishing prostate cancer cells. The three most common antiandrogen drugs are flutamide, bicalutamide, and nilutamide, which are given in pill or tablet form. Since antiandrogen therapy does not actually eliminate testosterone, it tends to have fewer or less severe side effects than those associated with orchiectomy and LHRH analogs. Possible side effects from antiandrogens include diarrhea, nausea, liver problems, and tiredness. Men may experience breast or nipple tenderness and breast growth while taking this medication. Antiandrogens can be used in combination with one of the other two therapies to form a complete or total androgen blockade, or CAB. LHRH analogs and orchiectomy prevent testosterone release from the testicles but a small amount is still released by the adrenal glands. Antiandrogens can block the action of this small remaining amount of testosterone at the prostate. There is, unfortunately, conflicting evidence about whether or not complete androgen blockade is more effective than using an LHRH analog or orchiectomy alone, and this topic remains controversial among specialists. This may be an option for some men who want to be as aggressive as possible in their treatment approach, or in men whose cancer is progressing on LHRH analog or orchiectomy alone. A short course of hormone drug therapy may be given to a patient before radiation therapy or surgery to reduce the size of the prostate tumor, making it easier to treat. Such therapy is called neoadjuvant therapy and is usually given for approximately 2 to 8 months. Though neoadjuvant therapy can shrink the size of a tumor, Studies have not proven whether it improves survival rates or prevents cancer recurrence when compared to radiation therapy or prostatectomy alone. Adjuvant hormone therapy is hormone drug therapy given after prostatectomy or radiation to help eliminate any cancer cells that may remain. Since hormone therapy works throughout the body, unlike local surgery or radiation, adjuvant hormone therapy is particularly useful for eliminating disease that has spread. Adjuvant use of hormone drugs with radiation therapy or surgery has been shown to improve survival rates compared with radiation or surgery alone in certain situations. Intermittent or on-again off-again hormone therapy was developed in an attempt to allow patients some periods of relief from the side effects of therapy and to possibly increase the duration of effectiveness of hormone therapy. This treatment involves giving hormone drug therapy for a period of time until a certain response is achieved, for example, a decreased PSA value or resolved symptoms, then temporarily stopping treatment until there is evidence of disease progression, in other words, a rising PSA. At this time, the therapy is resumed. Clinical trials of intermittent hormone therapy are still in progress, and it is too early to say whether this new approach will provide the same survival benefit as continuous hormone therapy. One significant advantage of intermittent therapy is that when treatment is withheld for a period of time, sexual function and quality of life may improve. Currently, most research data supports the idea that intermittent therapy is as effective as the continuous approach in terms of cancer treatment. Furthermore, research trials do demonstrate that a person's quality of life and sexual function improves when they are off the treatments. Nearly all prostate cancers treated with hormone therapy become resistant to treatment over a period of months or years. When this happens, the hormone therapy may be temporarily stopped, called antiandrogen withdrawal. This sometimes allows the cancer to respond again to future hormone treatment. Sometimes, prostate cancer will find a way to grow even in the absence of testosterone. If resistant to one hormone treatment, it may be responsive to a change in hormone therapy or an additional hormone therapy. However, if the cancer progresses and no longer responds to any hormone therapy, 
the cancer is referred to as hormone refractory. This results from changes in the testosterone receptors on the prostate cancer cells that are caused by genetic changes called mutations. These occur after a period of exposure to hormone therapy. For hormone refractory prostate cancer, the therapy may be continued to help relieve symptoms. Or chemotherapy, the use of drugs to attack cancer cells, may also be attempted. Recently, for the first time, a chemotherapy drug has been discovered that improves survival in this scenario. The goal in these difficult situations is to allow patients to survive symptom-free for as long as possible. Follow-up care after hormone treatment for prostate cancer includes regular PSA and testosterone blood tests and physical examination of the prostate, if not previously removed, to detect any recurrence of the cancer. Patients should consult with their doctor about how long hormone therapy will need to be continued. The doctor will be watching carefully the PSA response to the hormonal treatments prescribed and the PSA should drop while treated with hormone therapies. When the PSA begins to climb, or symptoms become prominent, your doctor may consider switching hormone treatments or even consider the use of chemotherapy for treatment. Thus, the PSA is a very sensitive test to see how well the hormone treatments are treating your prostate cancer. Hormone therapy is easily administered, very quick acting, and has modest side effects. It does not require admission to hospital, like some chemotherapy treatments for other cancers, and has an easy follow-up schedule. It may decrease complications and prolong survival of patients with extensive prostate cancer and is an excellent means of reducing pain for metastatic cancer. Having said this, hormone therapy is not curative. It works only for a limited time, which varies from patient to patient, and its sexual side effects and effects on quality of life can be upsetting to some men. Hormone therapy is highly successful in treating prostate cancer and is an invaluable treatment in high-risk, advanced, and metastatic cancers. Studies have shown that even with metastatic cancer, five years after beginning hormone therapy, 40 to 75 percent of patients are cancer progression-free, meaning that the cancer is not progressing and worsening. For localized high-risk cancer, one study showed that seven years after adjuvant hormone therapy following prostatectomy, 77 percent of patients were cancer progression-free. Another study has shown that 5, 8, and 12 years after combined radiation and hormone therapy, 90, 87, and 81 percent of patients respectively were cancer progression free. To summarize, hormone therapy is a treatment given to slow the growth of prostate cancer. It blocks the action of testosterone on prostate cancer cells through surgery, called orchiectomy, or drugs, such as LHRH analog therapy or antiandrogens. It can be given alone or in conjunction with other prostate cancer treatments. Results are temporary, side effects are moderate, and results of its effectiveness are promising. These modern references were used to assist in the preparation of this module and are available for your review on the internet or through your local medical library should you wish to do more reading on this subject. These are just a few of the many online resources available to educate you on prostate cancer and help you find support. There are also many books and pamphlets written specifically for patients with prostate cancer, and this is just a sample of several. These may be available at your local medical library, bookstore, or prostate center. We sincerely hope that this module has furthered your understanding of hormone therapy for prostate cancer. We wish you the best for the future and thank you once again for viewing this educational program.